everyone. My name is Rocky Lee. I'm a project coordinator with Curriculum First Nation. Um, I'm leading Curriculum's um, efforts in um, sockeye restoration and starting the Curriculum Sockeye Hatchery. Um, I guess first off, I wanted to just say that you know, when, I, when I look out amongst the room, I see the many, many, many individuals here with decades of experience uh, with stewardship here within the Curriculum Watershed. And I want to say it's an honor to be able to be here and speak amongst uh, all of you. So I just wanted to mention that. Before I start off here, um, I've been asked to um, provide a hatchery update, but I think um, I need kind of to be a bit of a historian here as part of it um, before I get into the hatchery because um, you know we're attempting sockeye restoration, but why do we need to actually restore sockeye? So um, here's my here's my attempt at trying to tell some of that history. Um, we have to go back um, over 100 years ago, and that's where. Now, Coquillum was, I guess it was a small community. Um, when you think about the province, that's where New West was kind of the center of it. It was over in Victoria in terms of the capital. And um, Coquillum Lake was providing drinking water um, for New Westminster. Um, Vancouver was just starting to be developed. And so that's where, in order to power streetcar development, they needed a power source. And so the engineers at the time, um, they came up with a plan uh, to uh, down the Coquitlam, um, Coquitlam Lake, create a tunnel connecting Coquitlam Lake to Bunsen Lake, and then creating the Bunsen Power Generating Station. So in terms of the Coquitlam Dam, that's the first uh, dam for BC Hydro within the province. Um, so if we, with that first dam, it was a small one, um, only three meters, um, it was a fish ladder, um, and kind of served its purpose, but um, I think shortly after it was built, they found that there was scouring there, which kind of created some leaks in that dam. Um, and so shortly thereafter, that's where they needed to develop plans to actually create a much more bigger, robust dam, which has led to um, the uh, dam that uh, was built in the, in the 1912th and 1913th period. Um, and so that dam is, uh, it was built to 30 meters, kind of the current height today, but once that dam was built, there was no fish passage, right? So when you look at species like, uh, stuff like um, sockeye, um, sockeye is part of their life history. As a juvenile, they actually need a freshwater lake to grow up in. So in this case, with the dam being present, no fish ladder there, um, the young fish that were in the lake were stuck there, and the adults that were in the ocean, they couldn't get back. Um, up into the lake to, to spawn. And so you know, effectively from there forward, um, the numbers started to dwindle to the point where you know, they're not really counted so much um, within the watershed since then. Back in 2008, there was uh, seismic upgrades. And so that's where um, the dam was upgraded for seismic standards. There was a, a number of enhancements done, um, but again, no fish ladder provisions at that point. Um, there was work probably starting in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, around stewardship groups to kind of kickstart the efforts towards sockeye restoration. And so that's kind of um, how things, there's been a number of activities over the course of the last over 20 years uh, towards um, studies and working towards uh, restoring the stock that once uh, used to exist. Um, so Effectively today, um, Coquitlam and sockeye are, are uh, deemed extirpated from the watershed. But we do know, you know, as uh, Jason's data would have shown, that there's you know, there's uh, limited numbers of sockeye that do still come back. So, um, despite the uh, dam being present, um, you know, based on its construction, there are small numbers of juveniles that have the origins of the sockeye that once existed over 100 years ago. They still live in the lake uh, as what we would call as kokanee, but they do make it through um, to the river. Know, and then a very small number do, migrate, uh, do end up coming back um, uh, to the Coquitlam River to spawn. So just in summer here, when I think about the Coquitlam Dam, some of the barriers for sockeye, like the 30 meter height, no fish ladder, um, and then also um, one, one added bit to, and I've had to learn about uh, dam anatomy, if you will, um, the Coquitlam Dam actually has low level levels. There's no surface spillway as part of that dam. So when it comes to young sockeye trying to make it out, they can't find current uh, to determine where the lake outlet is because the low level, the outlets are actually below the surface of the water uh, quite deep. Um, and so it's some of the challenges. Now, um, fast forward to today, recent years, I'll actually maybe step back a sec. So 
There was an attempt actually to provide some hatchery enhancement to help restart the sockeye population in the time period between 2015 and 2019. That was through the work of uh, volunteers with the Grisco Wissel Hatchery, others with Fisher, Fishers and Oceans Canada. Um, they essentially had um, taken eggs from the coconut up in the lake. Um, they raised them at Roswell Creek Hatchery over on Vancouver Island, um, released them in 2017. Uh, but when it came to 2019, and anticipating at least some fish that came back, we didn't get any back. And then that's what kind of triggered some more questions as to why is that? And uh, a bunch of the efforts around, you know, maybe we should build a hatchery, try to produce more, and then get better a better understanding exactly of what's happening here. Is it the fish don't want to come back, or is it something else going on in the ocean, or what? Um, so, which leads us to today. Um, our hatchery, um, it's actually a partnership between Coquitlam and First Nation, Coquitlam First Nation is, in, is the operator of the hatchery, and I'm kind of representing them in that, in that regard. Uh, BC, Hatch BC Hydro is providing funding for the hatchery as well, and, and the build and uh, you know, operations of it. Um, Metro Vancouver, um, we're working in uh, the hatchery itself, and you'll see in my display, um, if you get a chance to stop by. Uh, the location is actually up in the protected watershed area, um, the, uh, um, on the north of Pipeline Road. Um, so they provide any kind of services to the program as well. And um, Fisheries and Ocean Canada, they provide technical support to the program. Okay, so uh, why build a hatchery? Um, so, um, based on a life cycle model study actually that was published back in 2018 by um, Dr. Um, Eduardo Martins at UNBC and Phil Hilger from, from R2 Resource uh, Consultants, um, they found that. Um, it's actually an issue with getting enough juveniles outside of the lake in order to restart the, uh, restart the population. So that's, got, that's one of the things that had triggered a bunch of analysis around different options to make changes to the dam to encourage uh, or to be able to get more juveniles out, considering the issue with the surface flow and, uh, and helping them find the outlet. Um, ultimately, improvements to juvenile fish passage are needed to help with that. Um, but then for our hatchery, that's where we need to really, it's actually, uh, the design is created to address some of the questions that were outstanding back from that work when we released hatchery, um, hatchery sockeye before. And that is, um, you know, are, are, the, are the, uh, the, the company in the lake, do they still have that anadromy trait still strong enough within them so that any of those juveniles, so enough juveniles would actually make it out and want to go to the ocean. Um, and so the anatomy trade, that's where, you know, among specific salmon, and that's their desire to actually, you know, uh, from fresh water where they were born, to really want to leave that fresh water environment, migrate to the ocean, and then come back to spawn in those uh, areas that they were born in. Right? Is it actually strong enough amongst them to restart the population? Um, and then the other uh, the aspect that we're studying there as well is, um, is the ocean survival, right? So once they leave our environment here within the home watershed, um, what's the what's the survival rate for um, for between the smolt stage when they leave to adults when they return? By being able to produce um, um, thousands of fish, right? And so you know, currently we're targeting to be able to raise thirty thousand eggs. Uh, we're trying to produce fifteen thousand to, to the smolt stage, and then anything left over from that we would release to grow naturally up in the lake um, after that. Um, is really to boost those numbers to get some better assurance of uh, what the returns are. Um, so in terms of the hatchery today, uh, what I can say is, you know, over the past year there's been a bunch of activity, so you know, things are definitely moving forward. Um, uh, BC Hydro's construction company, Industra, they actually had broken ground at the hatchery site back last March and worked through to April, but then unfortunately had to pause construction pending completion of some further design work. Um, the hatchery construction is paused today, but um, I've been I've been informed that you know the construction is to actually restart next week. So we're really looking forward to things getting restarted and having moved past some of the design challenges previously. Um, I'd also been uh, told that yeah, you know what, you could expect to you know have it handed over to you you know May next year, and so you know really I'm looking forward towards that time frame of uh, being able to start it up, test it, and you know, get ready for a incubation uh, in the fall next year. Um, in the meantime, we've had other work that's been underway. So um, within the last 
few weeks, actually, we've been out on Coquitlam Lake conducting a hydroacoustic study to assess the population uh, of, of coconut up in the lake. The last study work there hadn't been done since 2015, so it was really um, you know, some question as to, you know, is population stable or has it changed um, over the years? Um, and one other thing that we're going to be doing um, actually next week is we're going to also you know, go back up to Coquitlam Lake, fish some of the areas that coconut are known to spawn in, and capture some nails so that we can take milt and crowd preserve it for future use. So that was kind of trying to think ahead um, to the possibility of, hey, if we did get a coconut female back and she doesn't have a partner, well, then what? And so this is um, a bit of an insurance plan there to try to ensure that do we get that valued precious fish back that we can actually make use of her eggs you know, to help serve the population. I um, just want to end here with just some different photos. So um, it was actually last week I got the opportunity to um, tour the construction company's yard where they're actually holding some of the equipment that I will have at my hatchery. So that you'll see a bunch of those components on the sides. That photo in the middle is actually from, for those of you actually have been up in the watershed, if you're actually on the road, um, just, uh, just past the watershed gate on the right hand side, that's where the hatchery is, and you can see maybe a little bit of glare there um, amongst the display, but um, you can see where the earth's been turned a bit, where they've placed some you know, footings for the hatchery, and uh, the next step is really to get some of the supply lines, green lines installed.